Hi friends, I'm Marie Melora. Welcome to my channel. Today is the new day <laughs> for me. What? Today's haul kind of represents a lot of the philosophical and kind of conceptual changes that I would like to implement and keep with me in 2021. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I got and we'll talk a little bit more about the philosophy of all of it uh, at the end of the video. So first things first, I got a sec, this is like an almost empty uh, travel, I got a second one of Intoxicated by Killian and already gifted it to a friend of mine. Apparently this is a, a smashing hit with a lot of people who don't necessarily under know about the perfume market as its own thing but those who love the smell of coffee. Intoxicated is not necessarily a latte smell or mm, uh, fresh ground coffee beans. This is more of a Turkish coffee. It's rich in all kinds of spices, especially cardamom. Intoxicated by Killian uh, has been with me for probably like 7.5 oh seven, 7 milliliters. I would say for a year. No, actually a little bit less, slightly over half a year, and I'm almost done with it. And the moment I show it to various friends of mine, if I get a chance to see them in person, um, they love it. So most people, if you like the smell of kind of spicy coffee or chai, you probably will love this. So uh, I just wanted to like put it on the record that I'm finishing my own. I already bought one for a friend of mine as a gift, and I might buy another one for me when this is over, when this one is out. Next is a result of exchanges, uh, a couple of really lucky exchanges that I had after my declutter video where I decluttered a lot of my fresher, uh, kind of uh, cheaper, all kinds of green, herbaceous, zonic, light floral perfumes. And here's what I got without spending a penny. I exchanged a few and got here Atelier Cologne Cedar Atlas. This is basically a new bottle, barely sprayed. Uh, that was exchanged with Erica. Thank you so much, Erica, for working with me on this. I do find that this is yet yet another freshy type of fragrance, but Atelier Cologne knows exactly how to make bright, potent, yet elegant type of colognes. I do prefer Atelier Cologne stuff to Jo Malone, to be honest. I do find that the way that they blend their eau de toilettes and colognes it's kind of like more interesting to me for some reason. I can't quite put my finger on it, but Atelier Cologne, I, I do prefer to myriads of other niche houses that specialize in light and layering friendly type of colognes. So very happy to get that. I don't really have very strong impressions of it yet because this is a whole, so you'll probably see it in various uh, various kind of grouping videos. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to report more on that later. Also from Erica, I swapped a bottle for Copper Canyon by Good Chemistry. All right, here we go. I've never heard of Good Chemistry before I just went to the nearest Target and saw a rather intriguing display of names there. They had uh, perfumes or eau de parfums, they had body mists, they had like a variety of um, of scents there and they had both kind of these you know like soli soli notes type of stuff i don't know water lily this is one the one that i bought and used up completely and they had more imaginative names the conceptual names for example copper canyon could be one of those and the more i read about the brand the more i get impressed at how affordable sustainable yet interesting their products are I'm intrigued. Copra Canyon is both light and very everyday wear friendly, but it's not, it's unusual. I just need to study it more, I need to find the pyramid and yada yada yada. I'll, I'll let you know later. I'm very excited to have it and actually I'm seriously considering 
potentially kind of sampling a few of other their perfumes because this is just yeah like it hits all the right spots affordable sustainable fun interesting and rather good blending so far from what I sampled from them um, another perfume I think it was also from America um, if I'm not mistaken miracle Lo de Parfum by Lancôme. The smell of my youth, if you wish. Oh, the moment I smelled it again, I missed it. I missed it. And to be honest, I do prefer it to the new and so popularized with millions spent on marketing Idol. I haven't tried Idol Intense. I don't know how that smells. But when it comes to kind of rosy peonies and like refreshing florals, I love Miracle by Lancôme. I haven't smelled it in years and still maybe it's just idiosyncratically close to to my heart because of the memories that I shared with it when I was in my 20s but like I'm craving a full-size bottle I'm not gonna lie I will use up the travel size bottle completely first because I need to make sure that this is more than just a little short-lived you know wine nighter or kind of type of like affair and if after using all the whole thing up and i think here we have what is it 10 mil maybe even more yeah it's 10 mil if i if i'm still not satisfied if i'm not ready to move on I might be buying Miracle by Lancome again. It's just, you know, every single time when I'm ready to give up on designer market and like just like affordable market and say like, you know, niche is just inherently more interesting. Something like this happens and I'm back, I'm back, baby. Another happy exchange. I dreamt about this perfume. This is um, Eau de Mandarin Ampre, Mandarin in Amber by Hermes. I looked and looked and looked for like a cheaper second-hand owned bottle and it's rarely ever you can find it less than $70 and I think it's actually worth the money um, but I just couldn't quite pull the plug and when I got an opportunity to exchange it I was all over it so this is another beautiful example of winter orange I think I already showed you in my winter favorites uh, the kind of the winter citruses that I wear, which is Jomalon bitters, orange bitters. Beautiful winter, kind of somewhat boozy type of orange. Here we get a different take on a similar story. This is a little bit more vanilla amberish. It's a little bit smoother, rounder, calmer. Beautiful, beautiful stuff and perfect timing for me to wear it now. It's just like, now is the time to wear it. Um, another decant of a niche perfume, Rose Kashmir, Kashmiri, uh, but I think it's like Perfumes de Rosine. They have 50 shades of rose kind of uh, perfume line. Interesting, very patchouli-like. Non-trivial and very bright, Rose Kashmiri will need some work in terms of like me finding a fit for it in my mood and on my skin. Next is a generous gift that I got from my subscriber a while ago. I just forgot to show you guys. This is Oud-ish by Zarka Performs. She sent me a decant before. I completely used it up and just kept looking at it longingly online because it's not cheap. Oudish is not an oud-centric perfume by any means. This is one of those kind of white ouds, like clean scents that I associate with ironing my clothing. I know that people can mean a thousand things by clean. Some people mean lav spicy lavender, some people mean white musks, the, the jasmine, whatnot. Like there's white florals, there's so many facets to what people associate with cleanliness. To me, is the hot, the hot vapor that is kind of goes through warm cotton, wool, linen, with a bit of a metallic notes that you know that the iron has. And this is it. Udish to me 
is either hot skillet smell or hot iron smell. I love it. I love it. It's very nude. It sits close to the skin, but this is so unusual. It has such a specific olfactory profile and such a such an interesting fit with my you know with my memory, olfactory memories that I'm so excited to wear it. In one Marshalls, specifically one Marshalls in the in the vicinity. Uh, they every once in a while have niche brands or really really good designer brands like on a good deal I don't know why but that's the only the, that specific store where I, can, where I can find cool stuff including the whole review about Atelier Bloem if you haven't seen it you should it's a, an amazing niche brand this is where I find like the best stuff but only there this time see what I scored I found commodity vetiver for whatever reason, appears on the shelves for men, so keep an eye out. If you're if you're going to Marshalls to find something by commodity, look on both sides of the aisle. Here I got a hundred mil or even more, yeah, hundred mil for thirty-five dollars, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty cool, right? I I, I think it's pretty cool. It's very cheap for for what it is. So here we get a nutty type of vetiver. This is a very particular take on vetiver and vetiver oil um, that I also find in Faro Noir, no, not Faro Noir, in Madrona by House of Montreal. And if you are the vetivers, where the oiliness of it takes on almost gourmand nutty notes. Is it hazelnut? Is it walnut? I don't know. It's just like, it's like the, the nut oil, that's what I feel in certain types of vetiver, and this is definitely it. It's not too smoky, it's not by any means austere or brutal like colder vetivers, like Anchor Noir by Lalique could be, or you know, some, some other vetivers. This is actually distinctly soft, almost like a Nutella paste type of vetiver. Not that it smells of chocolate, but it definitely gives me this kind of like nut paste vibe. I find it super interesting. I already amassed a huge collection of vetiver centric fragrances. If you guys are interested, we can do a review. We can look through and I can maybe even rank them. If you're, if you're looking for something like that, let me know in the comments below. But 35 bucks, that's, that's good. Okay, this is a controversial purchase because I bought this before and I sold it. And I bought this again. This is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Amethyst. I got it for $18. I think that's pretty good. 50 mil. Here we get a rather... Mm, smooth, comfortable take on tobacco with a honeysuckle. I love honeysuckle, I love tobacco, but last time I tried to wear it, last time I actually bought a bottle like this, I couldn't. And to me it smelled of wet cigarettes. Go figure. I don't know why, there's no good reason for it, but it did. And after, I think, wearing it three times or so I just gave up and eventually either exchanged gifted or sold the bottle I don't remember um, I got it again to be completely transparent for the price and for the fact that I love Nirvana Bourbon so much that I decided to give it another chance for eat for 18 bucks I felt like it was a no-brainer lo and behold I love it now it's like as if it's a different person smelling the same thing. I do get the tobacco, not the wet cigarettes, actual tobacco leaves. I do get the honeysuckle, finally. I even do get a bit of the woody nose. I think it's cedar, right? It's cedar. It's beautiful. It's both interesting enough to make it rather unusual for run-of-the-mill design, you know, like like an average price, not too expensive designer fragrance. At the same time, it's very user-friendly. It's not forcing you out of your comfort zone. It just adds a bit of a 
subtle hipster twist to a rather familiar olfactory accords. I'm so glad I gave it another chance, to be honest. I'm surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised. Nirvana Amethyst, second time in my collection, and this time I rather enjoy wearing it. I'm looking forward to wearing it. I think early spring, I feel, would be like the best time. Another purchase was a bit frivolous. I'm not happy I did it, but I mean, no regrets now, right? This is Keiko Micheri, a decant of Umi. Ume? Basically dedicated to plums. Ume. Keiko Micheri. Uh, Keiko Micheri is incredibly loved for the way that they approach Middle Eastern or traditional Japanese and Eastern sweets. I mean, one of the best-selling fragrances they have is Lukum, that kind of has a rival of Serge Luton's Rahat Lukum. I tried both, I'm just not the biggest fan of Rahat Lukum as a flavor, so to speak. But plums, I was really interested because I do enjoy plum wine every once in a while. There's like a certain time of the year when I just dig it. And I wanted to find prune-like sweet gourmand fragrance that is not too toasted because prunes and the dried prunes are so prevalent and in heavy gourmand type of perfumes tobacco vanille like you name it like half of Tom Ford fragrances that are heavy and gourmand probably have uh, prune, prune flavors prune notes in them so many, so many, most of tobacco fragrances are very heavy on dried and sweet prunes. But I wanted prune wine, plum wine, because it's, it's different. If you ever tried it, you'll, you'll tell, totally get what I, what I mean. It's sugary sweet, but it's not smoky, it's not heavy, it's just, it has a very specific frequency band in which, in which it lives. And I, I think that's it. I think Keiko Micheri Ume is as close as it gets in my memory to the taste of plum and smell of plum wine. I, I rather love it. I already used up, I think, like two mils just the day off because I, I just kept bathing in it. It's yummy. It's unusual because of what it is, but it's not that complicated. The, the fragrance doesn't wear you. You wear the fragrance in this case. And this is what I love about how Keiko and Micheri approaches fragrances. They can take the, the wildest, the craziest concept and kind of mold it into submission of something understated yet rather well-defined. I'm happy. I'm happy I got it. Though, well, we'll talk about it at the end. It's like my plans, how to shop in the new year. Uh, another sample that I think I got from a subscriber, uh, Coffee Break by Mason Margiela. The one that didn't make it to my um, Martin Margiela's brand, which is Mason Margiela, uh, review. If you haven't seen it, it's out there for you. Um, since then, somebody sent me a barber shop to try. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. But no, no, I, at some point I was trying to choose between by the fireplace, jazz club and uh, at the barber shop. And I still think it's gonna be the jazz club. If I am to shell my money on another replica perfume, I think it will be jazz club. Coffee break, rather new to me. I heard a lot about it. I'm yet to find a true, true, true ground coffee beans type of smell, so we'll see how that fares. I hear the coffee break by Replica is mostly like a Starbucks latte type of formula rather than the actual coffee beans, but we'll see. And okay, before I get to like the star of this whole, a decant and my monthly subscription that I already prepaid. Um, it's from fragrance.com or fragrance.net.com, it's the same company. 
And this time I got myself another Serge Luton's because I'm trying to force a decision on how many Serge Luton's fragrances I'm willing to try this year. And I'm I would rather tr try them first and buy them later because these are not the easiest perfumes to enjoy if you, if you haven't sampled them beforehand. So here we have uh, La Participe Le participe passé, oh. le participe passé, Serge Luton's. Okay, I had a teeny tiny vial of it that I brought from Paris. Believe it or not, Serge Luton's is sold in Paris's Sephora. Pretty amazing. Um, and I thought I liked it. I thought it was like very honey like, ambery slightly spicy, like sweet, kind of a heavy blanket, this perfect winter. But once I got the generously sized decant, which is like eight mil, I think. Yeah, now I have eight mil. I was a little bit taken aback. It's very, it's like baked caramel. But to me, it quickly turns into burnt caramel. The synthetic caramel syrup that somebody put in a little, a little, I don't know, little skillet and just burn it to hell. Just forgot on the stove. And this is what I smell. And it's rather not my cup of tea. If you love caramel gourmands, you probably will find a way to kind of melt it with your skin. Again, this is just like a first try. I guess third try at this point for me. But it's just like, it's not vibing with me. And the one time that I wore it on my skin, I didn't really get far with it in terms of the opening and the complexity and the dynamics of it was not really impressive. Serge Luton's fragrances are very moody. They are pretty much like wizard wands in the world of Harry Potter. It's like one chooses the wizard, not the other way around. I find it exactly the same behavior with Serge Luton's and, and their perfumes. They choose you, you don't choose them. If they don't vibe with you, you better give up early. So I mean, I'm not giving up yet, yet but I'm not super hopeful either. Definitely not buying a full size bottle anytime soon. And as a gift with purchase, I got another Serge Luton's. It's La, La Majesté La, La Rose. They're, I think it's a newer release that they have dedicated to Rose. And to be honest, deep, barocco, vibrant, sweet gourmand roses are all the rage for me this winter. Like this is the obsession that I have right now in my perfume collection. So I've been accumulating all possible lavish, you know, rich, expensive, be them spicy, be them jammy, be them sweet, anything smoky, gothic, gold encrusted type of roses. I just want a very rich and fun, very mm, festive type of rose perfume and this is definitely one of those i mean at least it was made with with that in mind it's like a royal rose la majesty la majesty la, la rose so her majesty rose serge Luton's. you see here's i feel like i'm in the pickle a little bit with this let me explain why because just a few months before that, I got another rose by Serge Luton's, and this is La Fille de Berlin, the Berlin's, uh, the maid of Berlin, which is also dedicated to velvety, dark red, very much royal type of rose. <laughs> this is like an exercise find, find Waldo type of riddle. What is different between them? I don't know. To me, these are two quintessentially uh, tributes to a Bulgarian rose oil. Something that definitely has legitimate place in perfumery, 
but something that I had way too much of when I was a kid. So to me, it's just such a cliche of what a rose, an interpretation of rose could be, that every time I get Bulgarian rose oil, I'm like, I'm out, I'm done. We had it everywhere. We had it absolutely everywhere. It was cheap as dirt and it's as beautiful as it is. Don't take me wrong. I had way too much of Bulgarian rose in my childhood. So at this point, I just, I just never ever gravitate toward it. Sa Majesté la Rose, La Fille de Berlin. I find that the the newer, more I think it's this is even more expensive. Uh, Her Majesty Rose by Serge Lutens is even more sour, even more oily. It's even more rem reminds me of Bulgarian rose oil. The La Fille de Berlin is a little bit more of a kind of syrupy jammy rose with an odd juxtaposition with kind of like a rose bushes, like a wild rose flavor. But ultimately, could you really, do you really need both? I don't, I don't need either. That's like the harsh truth. It's just, this is just not my cup of tea. Especially, and now we're, if you, if you are getting to it, especially now. A while ago, <laughs> let me tell you a story. Short story long. A while ago, I went to a Saint Explore. The owners of Amur Oud brand were there. They were having a booth and they were also giving a, uh, a, a few, they were, I think, contributing to a few talks that were happening. On the on the subject of perfumes and there's so many people there so many people it was crazy so it was really hard for any of us including brand owners to really make a close connection because it was a bit overwhelming nevertheless I don't know if they remember me I remember them we started talking about roses and they said like oh you know like people just keep trying to find the next best rose scent but like there's this tea rose that's just just as beautiful as it was in 70s and i was like yeah i know it it's like it's this beautiful bush rose kind of like garden after the rain type of scent and we kept talking kept talking it's like you know what i'm actually right now looking for a uh most gothic rose i can find on the market do you have anything that i should consider from your brand and they gave me a sample I think it was like a three mil sample of their very limited exclusive release that they were marketing in Abu Dhabi, London and Moscow. When I hear those three cities, I know it's going to be lavish, hard luxury. It's going to be prim, luxury primo. And that was Mysterious Rose by Amur Oud. And needless to say, Finally, it's mine. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't fall in love with it immediately. I just tried it, and at that point, I was so, I was so kind of like narrow focused on trying the Serge Luton's roses. And actually, this is another one that I wanted to mention: Tiziana Terenzi Porpora, beautiful, kind of like rags to riches type of rose, very vibrant, fun sweet but not too sweet i mean there are a lot of beautiful rich rose scents like dark red rose scents and i even have like some amazing incense roses like i probably should make a video about it at some point if you want me to please leave it a comment below and mysterious rose is like well yeah like it's just like this ultra expensive another rose scent but i pulled it out this december this sample and I was hooked. It's so smooth. It's like thick yet super shiny and smooth deep red silk satin. It's amazing. And it's it's been a long time since since I was that impressed with a random perfume that, you know, like nobody even pushed on me to be honest. So, I started hunting for it and I looked and I looked and I looked and it's rather hard to find and I found it 
I bid on it on eBay, paid with my own money, and I just got it. I just got it. I'm so happy. <laughs> no idea how happy I am because I don't know. I just I just, I'm having such a crush on this rose. Look, this is like what luxury is all about. Ten out of ten. Packaging, I just can't even imagine what else I could ask for when it comes to a, a very lavish gift. Attention to detail is stunning. Everything about it is primo, primo. The bottle itself, non-generic, custom design. If the angles are supposed to be smooth, they're super smooth. If, if they're supposed to be sharp, they are very pointed and sharp. Everything about this bottle, again, let me get it in, in good shape for you. Just check this out. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. Packaging, definitely. It's just mouth-watering how beautiful it is. And the sand itself. Oh me, oh my. It, it, this is where it gets hard when I'm that in love with a fragrance I don't know like let me know if, if you have the same problem when I when I'm that head over heels euphorically in love I can't describe it because it's it's overwhelming and it's a very cohesive wholesome experience it's very easy for me to dissect fragrances when I approach it from a scientific point of view but here, I'm very partial. I'm in love with this rose. In a way, if I had to, if I had to bring in some comparison, though I don't want to, I think in these sultry, kind of like fruity, musky, rosy way, some early Killian releases could be in the same style. And yet, I tried a lot of Killian perfumes and I never really fell in love with their masks. They're gorgeous, they're super wearable, they're super smooth, but I don't love them. Maybe it's just me. When it comes to peachy masks, I actually do prefer the way that Mikalev does, does them and Royal Mosca and like many others. And when we're talking about kind of these rows that is somewhat... I don't know if, if they have lychee in this, but that's how I perceive it. It's like skin musks with either some berries or lychee fruit, like this like sweet rounded flavor with a little bit of sourness that doesn't go into Bulgaria, Bulgarian rose oil. There's nothing literal or plainly familiar about this rose scent. And this is what I love about it. It has references and inspirations from a lot of familiar flavors, but it, but it kind of makes its own category. I, it's it's narcotic to me I think I should stop here <laughs> I don't want to oversell it to enemy honestly because it's 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 pretty up there in terms of pricing I got lucky winning it in an auction I'm not sure like how how easy or hard it will be for you to to, to find a place to even sniff it but if you are in the market for a deeply seductive, demure, rich, just as sexy as it gets. A rose, a mysterious rose by Amur Oud stole my heart. I, <laughs> I'm so in love with it, it hurts. This is my New Year's gift to myself. I'm very happy that I have this beautiful fragrance. I'm. I'm gonna be investing a lot of my time wearing a lot of rose scents this month and if you give this video a like and leave a comment, maybe there's a high chance, there's a high probability we'll see each other in the next video when we'll talk about the best 
of the best of the best the most narcotic deep rich spicy sweet gourmand gothic dramatic rose scents thank you so much for watching now we're gonna transition to uh, to the section that some of my subscribers love the most but if you're not into kind of the philosophy and like reflection when it comes to olfactory hobbies thank you for watching I'll see you in the next video now let's talk about my philosophy of the new year